Okay, so living and walking in the Spirit is what we want to talk about here today. And we're going to be in Galatians chapter 5 uh, to begin here, and then we're going to jump over to Galatians chapter 6, and we're going to kind of stay there. So you might want to put a marker in your Bible at Galatians chapter 6 uh, so you can flip back to it throughout the lesson. And this lesson is a two-parter, so uh, we'll begin it here this morning and this evening, Lord willing, we'll, we'll uh, finish up these thoughts about living and walking in the Spirit taken from Galatians chapter 6. So Galatians 5, at verse 25, says, If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Uh, and as we think about living and walking in the Spirit, if we, if we live in the Spirit, if we are guided by the Word of God, you know, understanding that this is the God-breathed Word, that when Christ ascended into heaven, the Helper came and helped the apostles put down all the things into writing that the Lord had, had commanded them and, and told them that we might have that very word here today to look into, to understand what his will is. The, we have the mind of Christ here in front of us in the word. And if we are going to uh, live in the spirit, if we're going to live in according to, those, to, to that word, to that word that was breathed out by God through the spirit to the apostles, put down in words so that we can understand them. If we're going to do those things, if we're going to live in the Spirit, it's going to necessarily mean that we walk a certain way. It's going to mean that we walk in a certain direction. You know, if we, uh, if we are to set out on a course, as maybe some of us are this summer, uh, to take a trip, we're going to plot out a course, and it necessarily means we're going to go in a certain direction. It'd be an awful long journey to get to California going east. I dare say you could probably do it, but it would be a difficult thing to do. We have to walk in the right direction uh, when we are walking spiritually. So as we live and walk in the spirit, we have to think about those things. Romans 6 at verse 11 says, so you, all, so you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Those things that uh, formerly uh, vexed us in our lives. Or maybe if you're sitting here and you're outside of Christ, maybe they continue to be a thorn in your everyday life. That you seemingly are having difficulty escaping sins in your life. Things that you know are not according to the will of the Lord. If we are in Christ, and, and that means that we have... Uh, immersed ourselves in his truth, immersed ourselves in the waters of baptism for the remission of sins, after having come to a knowledge of him and understanding who he is, willing to confess him before men, being willing to turn away from those sins, repentance, and then being buried in those waters of baptism. So we are dead to sin and alive in Christ if we are a Christian. And so that's something to think about. If we're walking in the Spirit, if we're living in the Spirit, like, we're, like we read about there just a few moments ago in Galatians 5.25, uh, we, we have to consider those old things gone. We are dead to those things. Ephesians chapter 2, just a couple pages over, uh, Ephesians chapter 2, starting at verse 4, says, But God, being rich in mercy... Because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved. Now this morning we talked about uh, this for just a, a few fleeting moments uh, in, our, in our Bible study time. We, we covered a lot of ground this morning and I think, it was, uh, I think it was a profitable time. One of the things that, we, that was brought up and that we talked about is the idea of our, our works not being of any, of any merit. Our works are not what saves us, 
We're saved by the grace of God. We are saved by that free gift that he's given to us if we yet only obey. Understanding that if we do believe that he is and that we uh, desire to follow him and desire to be to walk in the spirit and to live in the spirit as, as he would desire for us to do, that uh, certain things will follow. Certain actions will follow. It's not that those actions are saving us, but they are a result of who you are if you're in Christ. You know, if you, you know, most of you know that, that I spent, prior to coming here to work with you, I spent 20 years teaching young people to drive. I've mentioned that many times, and the reason I mention it many times is you just can't, you just can't take that out of me. And when I drive, I, I still act like a driving instructor sometimes. Ask my wife. It doesn't go over well sometimes. But you just can't take those things out. And if you're a Christian, if you are in Christ, you just can't take those necessary things out. You, it's just necessary that you'll act a certain way, that you'll do certain things because you're living and walking in the Spirit. So with that having been said, let's, let's turn over to Galatians chapter 6 and talk a little bit more about living and walking in the Spirit. Uh, we're just going to go right down through here. My points are directly from uh, these verses in the Scripture. So V3 means verse 3. Uh, and what we want to take away from that is that we are to remember who we are. Remember who you are. If you're living and walking in the Spirit, remember who you are. Uh, let's start at chapter uh, verse 1, chapter 6, verse 1, and I'll read through verse 3. Just for context. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. So we, we, we need not get ourselves too wrapped up in in ourselves, thinking that something that we can do is going to save us. Understanding that the price has already been paid. More than that, that as we, as we walk through our daily life, that we don't start to consider ourselves better than the brother or sister sitting next to us, or the neighbor across the street, which perhaps lives in a, a lifestyle that is not in accordance with the will of the Lord. We need to remember who we are. And we might add to that, remember who you were. Because each and every one of us, no matter what, you know, we've, we, we've been in those places where we've been in the depths of sin. If you're still there today, we beg and plead for you to come out of those ways and to seek after the Lord. But in Romans chapter 8, at verse 14, let's, let's go on over there. Romans chapter 8. And then at verse 14. Romans 8 at verse 14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of an adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. So ask yourself as you, as you are walking through your daily life, are you led by the Spirit? And that, I'm, not, I'm, not, uh, I'm not trying to bring the idea to your mind that this is something that just overtakes you in some emotional feeling. There are so many in the religious world today that, that uh, you know, claim that in order to be uh, led by the Spirit, it's something that, that just wells up within them that can be akin to an emotional experience, and they might even call it a spiritual experience. And we see that all over in the religious world and have since the beginning of, of time. But uh, what we're talking about in being led by the Spirit is are you looking into the Word of the Lord? Are you looking into that truth that is brought to us by 
the Holy Spirit via the word that we have in front of us. Are you led by the Spirit? You know, we, we, we need to remember who we are and we need to not compare ourselves with others. This is a lesson that, that we need to learn over and over and over again in our lives. I see it in my own life that you know, sometimes I'll... You know, I mentioned it the other day that there's a, an older preacher that I know. He's in his 80s and he's been preaching since he was a teenager. And the scriptures are just instant in his mind. Just instant. And I asked his wife one day, you know, how does he, how does he come up with that stuff that fast? You know, he, he makes me feel uh, inadequate in, in the way of, of memory in my mind when I, when, I, uh, when I am with him. And she said, well, he's been doing it for 70 some odd years. You know, and, and that's just the truth. You have to put your mind into this thing. You have to live and walk in the spirit. You have to live and walk in the word. It's not something that is going to be zapped into your head. And our feelings, well, they just really don't matter that much. It's the idea that we understand what the will of the Lord is. And when we, uh, as human beings, being social creatures, as God created us, sometimes we want to compare ourselves to others. We want to compare ourselves to those that, that do better than us in our mind and make ourselves feel defeated. Sometimes we want to compare ourselves to others to make ourselves feel good. Maybe someone is having a difficult time and we say, oh, well, at least I'm not as bad as them. You know, which one of us hasn't thought that from time to time in our lives? And that's, that's something that, that we don't want to allow ourselves to do. We don't want to compare ourselves to anyone but Christ. Let's move over to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians um, chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And we're going to uh, read verse 12. 2 Corinthians 10 at verse 12 says, For we dare not class ourselves or compare ourselves with those who commend themselves. But they, measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves, are not wise. We, however, will not boast beyond measure, but within the limits of the sphere which God appointed us. And this is, keep in mind who is who's speaking, a sphere which especially includes you. Now, we, we, we need to remember who we are. Again, going back to that first point, and we need to not compare ourselves with others and we need to stay in our lane. We need to make sure that we aren't uh, uh, comparing ourselves with our neighbor or our brother sitting next to us, our sister sitting next to us. If we all compare ourselves to Christ, then we'll all be comparable, you know, <laughs> if that makes sense. But we need not try to establish a, 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 a high watermark or a goal that is set by the actions of a human being. And that is so difficult to do sometimes because we are physical beings in this world but the lord calls us to be spiritual and to get out of those to get out of that way of thinking so there in verse 4 of galatians chapter 6 to read that before this point is over uh, let, but let each one examine his own work and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another we need to pay attention to what we're doing. And of course, if we see a brother falling short in the context of the rest of the entirety of the scriptures, of course we need to keep our eye on each other and be those that build each other up and edify one another. But our focus is not to be the person next to us, it's to be what we're doing. Focus on what you're doing at, the, at this point in time and do what you can to further the kingdom of the Lord. And together, if we all do that, we'll, we'll be working together in that same purpose, but not because some person has led us. In verse 5 of Galatians chapter 6, for each one shall bear his own load. You know, we, we, we have to do our part. We each have our own job to do. 
It's each each Christian can do something. We can do something. You know, one of uh, one of us may be really good at lifting people up and, and, and building people up when they're just feeling down. And might be that 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 uh, breath of fresh air that, that comes into a room when when things are going in a in a bad direction. Some some of us have that ability. I wish I had more of it. I, I find myself lacking in my own mind anyway, but then again, there I go comparing myself with others. Just do what you can. Do your part. Realize that as you look around at all the things that that uh, the Lord's church is tasked with doing, it needs to be done by somebody. And so I ask you, are you doing your part? Is it, is it uh, can you say that you're doing your part in spreading the gospel? Have you had a conversation with anybody recently about spiritual things? Uh, can you say that you're doing your part in being ready for the assembly on Sunday morning? Uh, one of the things that, that I certainly, if you know me, I'm a procrastinator. That's one of my biggest faults. And uh, one of the things that I really have to force myself to do is to make sure that I'm ready and ready to go for a Sunday morning. And it, I'm here to tell you it is possible. Uh, and, but it is something that we have to think ahead for. You know, the, what we're doing here today should have started yesterday or the day before or the day before that, making sure that when we get in the car to come to services that it's not empty of fuel, that we don't have to make ourselves late because, because we had to stop and get fuel. Making sure that, that our alarm was set at the right time or that the, the, the kids are out of bed, you know, that everybody's getting dressed, uh, that, that, that everything's ready to go. Uh, we have to do those things, and those are just simple things, but spiritually we have to get ready. You know, I heard someone speak recently uh, on, on a podcast, and he, he, was, he was talking about, uh, you know, having, get, getting ready the day before, and he said he doesn't allow himself to go out and, and stay out late in social situations on Saturday nights, because it takes away from his ability to be alert and awake and ready to worship and think and study the scriptures on Sunday morning. There's something to think about. Are you prepared? Are you ready to be here? We have to do our part. We have to do our part uh, each, in our own, each in our own way. We all have those abilities that, that we do. You know, we find ourselves, uh, the men of the assembly here find themselves on the duty roster and we need to be ready and think about that before you're on your way to services and you're checking your email on your phone to see what Charles said you're doing today. You know, we have to do those things and, and, and do our part. We need to not be selfish. If we're living and walking in the spirit, we'll do our part and we won't be selfish about it. It's very easy to put our own desires above everybody else, above everything else going on around us. You know, Deuteronomy 25 at verse 4 speaks of not muzzling the ox. And I know that it's, a, it's, it's precarious ground for the preacher to talk about supporting the preacher. But there's more to it than this. Uh, you know, this, this particular verse is talking about uh, you know, not muzzling the ox while he is uh, uh, working out the grain or treading the grain. And um, as we go through our lives, we need to make sure that we're doing our part, not being selfish in our sharing with one another as the church. You know, it's, uh, it's something to, to be said when a, a assembly of the Lord's church is able to comfortably do the things that it needs to do to reach out to the community and to do the things that need to be done because the brethren are not selfish. And I'm, I'm standing here thankful every day for the, for the opportunity that you've given me to, to come and be with you and to, and to work with you these years. And, and I uh, am thankful and Lord willing, uh, continue to do so. Uh, and we all work together to further the Lord's kingdom in this place. 
But keep in mind that God's prescribed plan will work. Now, God prescribed that certain things happen. Uh, God prescribed that, uh, you know, that we fund the church uh, like a, through, through, our, through our giving. That we staff the church with the saints that are here and, and, and the jobs that are done need to be done uh, by us here. And we need to not be selfish with our time nor our funds in, in such things. So we need to each do our part. And that's part of it uh, is making sure that we don't allow ourselves to get, to get stingy with those things that we have. And, and, and again, these are things that throughout the world the church needs to, to think about. In, in verse 7 there in Galatians chapter 6. We read, do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. So are you sowing the right seed? Can you say that you are sowing the right seed that is going to allow the Lord to bring forth the increase? When you are out in the world every day, when you walk out of these doors here this afternoon, you're going to sow some seeds along the way. Are you sowing the right seed? Will people look at you and, and say, you know, that gal or that fella, they're different than the rest of the religious world. They actually open up the Bible and, 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 and speak from it. They actually, they actually seem to be living this life that I see in the scriptures. Now, if you're... If you're uh, here today and you're a Christian have you ever been asked do you really do that do you really abstain from doing this or that you know I've been asked that question it's 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 unfathomable sometimes to think that to think that someone doesn't do certain things that the world sees as totally totally okay but if we're sowing the right seed people will notice that hey there's a there's a difference there let's go back over to to Romans and uh, Romans chapter 2, starting at verse 6, it says, who will, <clears throat> who will render to each one according to his deeds? Eternal life to those who by patient continuance in doing good seek for glory, honor, and immortality. But to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. Now, so what, what is it that you're working yourself towards? Uh, most people that consider themselves religious would, of course, say, well, I'm, I'm, I want to go to heaven, and I want others to go with me, but are you sowing the right seed? Are you doing the things that are going to lead you to that, to that place where the Lord is pleased with those things that you've done? If we're going to live and walk in the Spirit, we need to make sure that we're sowing the right seed. And finally, as we come to the end of this lesson, we need to not lose heart. It's easy for us to become disheartened with the world around us. You know, how many times, probably weekly, we probably say to ourselves, I don't know what this world is coming to. If you allow yourselves to turn on the news and to hear the things that are going on around us, you might find yourself shocked and think, how? How can these things rectify themselves? How, how can we get out of the situations that we're in? But I remind you to look back through history and see that things, the history repeats itself. And I, remi I, I remind you that God is in control and that no matter what might happen to us here on this earth, his purpose is eternal for his people to be eternally with him, to have that hope of heaven. And that's where our comfort lies. If, somebody, if something happens in this world, and in the coming years we, we lose all the freedoms and the things that we hold dear to us, being spoiled by this society that we live in, having this relative freedom as compared to the rest of the world. If, if those things go by the wayside and times become difficult, uh, may we not lose heart. <coughs> 
may we continue on that path that we've begun. May we continue focusing on the Lord, living and walking in the Spirit, remembering who we are, and not comparing ourselves with others and getting dragged down with what's going on around us. Doing our part, not being selfish, sowing the right seed, and just staying the course. Building each other up, not losing heart. Let's go over to the book of James for just a few moments. James chapter 1 and at verse 2. It says, My brother, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. And then skip ahead to verse 12. And in verse 12 it says, Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Do you love the Lord? Then don't lose heart. If you love him, won't you do the things that he has commanded? Won't you stay that course and live and walk in the spirit? If you're sitting here today and you're outside of Christ, but you, you've you heard and you understand who the Lord is and faith is, is, is growing in you because you've heard the word and you believe that Christ is, you are starting to take a hold of that undeniable truth that Christ is the son of the living God. And you're willing to repent and turn away from sins and, and to seek after him, to change your ways, to allow him to change your ways. If you're willing to do that and confess him before men, not, not ashamed of him, you're willing to submit to baptism in the waters of baptism where you reach uh, contact that blood of Christ and you're raised to walk in that newness of life. If you're willing to do that today, we're ready to help you. If you've done so, but you find that you're losing heart, you find that the road has been tough and you've allowed yourself to become dragged down by the things of this world, then let us be that shoulder to lean on, to cry on. Let us be that support as you walk through the, follow, the, the coming days. Let us be that family in Christ that, that he means for us to be, that he has established in his church. If you're subject to the invitation, then by all means come forward as we stand and sing. I am resolved no longer to linger, charmed by the world's denied. Things that are high.